and show him my salvation. Hallelujah. Good long life. God will satisfy us and show us his salvation. And we know that salvation comes and is in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Redeemer and Savior. The declaration of the word. The word of God is my source of power. It is my light and my darkest hour. We will speak his word every day, declaring the victory in every way. He has made us the head and not the tail. The gates of hell shall not prevail. We are more than a conqueror, and we can't be beat. We are standing on top with all things under our feet. We will prosper in everything in Christ. We walk by faith and not by sight. Every door of utterance and promise to me, I will stand or not through unbelief. In words or deeds, I can do all things when I speak them boldly in Jesus' name. Every day I declare to be a prosperous one because I have the Father and the Son. Destroy Satan work in the power of sin. We are speaking lies into the lives of men. Amen. If you believe that, put those holy hands together. For truly we are speaking the truth. So he, we know if it's your tongue, we still have his strength. Our mantra this year that everything is going my way in the Lord. The good things that I have been praying, saying, and believe will manifest itself in 2020. Do you believe it? You have what you say. Amen. And the next voice you will hear will be none other than our bishop, Pastor Dr. Willis O. Lewis. Give him a round of applause. As he Amen. We are so grateful for the gift that God has given us yet. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, saints of the Most High God. You may take your seats in the house of the Lord. Amen. It's still all about Him. You don't give me a minute. This thing just keeps falling off, so y'all just bear with me. I'm going to get it right here in just a second. What is good to see you all? It really is. Amen. All right. To get this thing adjusted one more time, this mask gave me a little challenge, so. I have to make sure that I get adjusted here. All right. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. I feel like I'm having church again among the saints of God. And it is a blessing to see all of you who are here. I know this is not everybody, but it's just good to see uh, that the saints uh, came together on this day. Yes, sir. And that's been just give us an opportunity to continue that. Uh, Christian fellowship among ourselves, as I told you before, even though we might be scattered, but we're not shattered. Yes, we're but it's just good to be here today in the house of the Lord. Amen. And even in the uh, amid this pandemic we're dealing with, you know, God is still good. He's faithful. And I'm the one, I'm one here that can truly testify that he's good. And I know everybody did not make it through the COVID-19, uh, but through God's grace and mercy, he brought me through. And I'm telling you, the canopy of our protection, it does work. Amen. And see, Amen. God will be with you while you're in trouble, and he knows how to, deliver, how to deliver you out of trouble. So that's the good thing about our Lord. And I'm grateful that even when I was in trouble, he delivered me. While I was in trouble, he delivered me out of trouble. Amen. It's a blessing. It is a blessing. And I want to say thank you all and all of you who sent out the birthday greetings through text and through your gifts and all that. I want to say thank you. Thank you so much. God has kept me. But at one time, I thought I was going to make it, you know, to see uh, another birthday. But I'm grateful that I am here. And I'm very grateful to see you all here as well. 
Amen. It's such a blessing. Y'all looking beautiful. I unless something's wrong with my glasses, I'm checking to see. I clean them off while I got here. Oh, y'all are beautiful people. That's the truth, right? Y'all don't even want to say amen to yourself. But blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Good to see you all. Amen. I was hoping that Sister Jacob, I know she went to uh, Jamaica and for other reasons, but I want her to bring me back some of that Jamaican juice that they had over there. And uh, that stuff will keep you energized for days, and that's why Elder Jacob is still at like he's 16. So I think she bought him, gave him some, but Elder Jacob wouldn't share none with anybody, so that's okay. He might have a little bit left. You got any left, Elder? No, sir. He's just all gone, so don't y'all worry about that. I see some young people that are here, and now, as you all know, we did not employ our children ministry, teen ministry, young people ministry, but you're here in the sanctuary with us. But I trust that you all will also receive something from the Word of God as well as all the other adults that are here. But nevertheless, the Word is for all. Amen. It does not even separate, you know, any age group, race, color, nationality, or creed. Because the Bible says that Jesus Christ, you know, the, the same Lord over all. He's rich in mercy to all that calls upon him. Yes, there is no difference between the Jew nor the Greek. Yes, he is the same. And that's one thing by our Lord. The Bible says Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Praise the Lord. Amen. All right. Amen. We get ready to get into the word of God on this morning. And we've been dealing with the subject of uh, combating false teaching preaching, doctrine, not having itching ears. But the Lord took me back uh, to something even before, um, you know, just talking about how to deal with it, how to, how to handle it. But we must understand uh, that this is a spiritual warfare, a spiritual battle that we are in. And we're going to continue to talk about that and deal with that because there are some other things I want to bring out uh, to you in terms of this... Um, a spiritual pandemic that we are in. And this thing affected everybody from the Garden of Eden even to right now. It will continue to spread. But there is an antivirus for that one. Amen. Hello, somebody. Amen. We don't have to wait till next year in order for this antivirus to work. We don't have to wait for scientists or any of the doctors or physicians to approve the antivirus of this pandemic that we call sin. Because when Jesus Christ came, and even before then, he had an antivirus and he used it through the priests. He told the priests, he said, now this is what I want you to do. Every year, I want you to offer up, a, offer up sin for yourself and also offer up sin for the people. So the priest had to be right. If he wasn't right, that's why they put that, belt, that rope around him and they had bells around him because if he wasn't right, they would have to pull him out. So he had to go and be like an atonement for the people's sin. And so now when Jesus Christ came on the scene, he died for sin once and for all. And guess what? The Bible says it is important, it is, and it's very important for all of us to be born again. And once we are born again, and we become part of the family of God, guess what? The antidote begins to work right then. Amen. In your life, the antivirus of sin. Because without the shedding of the blood of Jesus Christ, there is no remission of sin. He came to uh, uh, cleanse us from all sin, iniquity, transgression, and everything, trespasses. He came to cleanse us from all of that. First John 1 and 9 says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So this pandemic that had happened way back in the Garden of Eden when, when the woman and Adam ate of the fruit, their eyes were open. Now they begin to understand uh, good and evil. And it shattered the whole human race. And God did something about it through his son, Jesus Christ. And we've been dealing with it ever since. But see, some people are still infected by it, wherein they fail to realize that antivirus is right here. Amen. It's right here. 
whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be what? Saved. If you don't call upon his name, you cannot and will not be saved from this sin of this pandemic what, that we call sin. But this thing that we're dealing with right now, this uh, coronavirus, this uh, COVID-19, people of God, listen to me. Even if scientists, physicians, doctors, don't come up with something that will help us and cure us. You know what God still does? We remember Psalms 91, which is the canopy of our protection. I'll be with you in trouble, and I'll deliver you out of trouble. Yes, sir. Ask Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Yes, sir. They were in trouble. That's right. They were thrown into the fiery furnace. While they was in trouble, God had already delivered them out of trouble while they was in the midst of trouble. And then the king had to release them out of fiery furnace. Why? Because God had delivered them. Because they spoke it, and from the beginning they said, King, we want you to understand something, that the God we serve, he is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he's also able to deliver us out of your hand, O King. We don't have to cogitate. We ain't got to ponder. We don't have to even think about this thing. We already know that our God, the God we serve, the God we serve, we know that he will bring us out. You got to know the God you serve. You got to continue to speak life, health, and strength. And know that God will bring you through. And even if some people, and we know that some people didn't make it through, however, they were still protected from the pandemic of sin if they knew Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord of, the, of their lives. Paul said, for me to live is Christ, die is the gain. So in Christ, we don't lose. We win either way. In life, we win. In death, we win. What does the scripture say? Y'all remember what the scripture tells us back in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter uh, uh, 15. Y'all know what it says. I love this. I love this scripture. Notice what it tells in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. It says, O oh death, where is thy sting? O oh grave, where is thy victory? Then it says, for the sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. So death, where is your sting? Where are you going to get your power from now? Because I'm covered by the blood of Jesus. Where are you going to get your power? Where are you going to get your strength from? Where are you going to get your steam from now, death? Because you know what, death? You have been an enemy to everybody. And the Bible said, for the last enemy to be destroyed is death. And when we go into glory, and the first thing he said in Revelation chapter 21, there be no more deaths. Right. You know why? Because we're going to have eternal life. So thanks to God, we win either way. Amen. O oh, death, where is thy sting? O oh, grave, where is your victory? Grave, you can't even hold me down. That's right, that's right. You know why? Because death is swallowed up in victory. Come on, come on, come it's swallowed up. You know when you swallow something? You know when you drink a, 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 a swallow of water? Yeah, that water is gone. <laughs> death is swallowed up Amen. in victory. Right. Notice this. It says, so when this corrupt shall have put on incorrupt, and this mortal shall have put on in immortality, then shall be brought to pass, saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. We win either way, people. We win either way. And I believe, and I see this, and I, and I don't mind sharing this with you all, and I told you all this before. That's why in my mind, it didn't, bother, it didn't bother me about, that, about dying. Yes, sir. In my mind, when I was in that hospital, that's why I was saying, you know, what's wrong with going home being with Jesus? Yes, I was ready to go. Mm -hmm. I said, what's wrong going home being my, with being with Jesus? In my mind, but I didn't speak the word. Mm -hmm. But then the Spirit spoke to me and said, are you ready to leave now? Right. Mm -hmm. Are you really ready to leave? Even your family right now in this condition. 
So I started speaking the words of life. I had the will to live, and I started speaking life again, and life can begin to reju rejuvenate my body, invigorate my spirit, Amen. and next thing you know, I begin to start, I got to see these symptoms begin to dissipate in me. Amen. The coughing begin to subside. You know, the, the shortness of breath became a, 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 a stronger in terms of me getting stronger in my breathing. But see, when you understand and know what the scripture said, and see, it would have been a different thing, Elder Jacob, if I actually, you know, would have feared. Yes, sir. If I would have feared death, mm -hmm. it, then it might would have came to me. Mm -hmm. Remember what Job said, the very thing that I feared has came upon me, mm -hmm. but I didn't fear it. Remember what David said, uh, you know, uh, 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 Brother Newton, he said, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. You know why? Because thou art with me. When you know God is with you, you don't fear anything. You can be alone in the dark by yourself, out there in the wilderness, naked and afraid, but you don't even have to be afraid if you know that God is with you. I can only surmise when Daniel was thrown into the den of lions and den of lions, he was the only one, only human that was in that den of lions. But you know what? Because he knew his God, and he knew his God was above everything. He was the creator of all, and I can only see Daniel not fearing, because he knew the God that he served would deliver him from the den of lions. And he didn't fear. And I do believe that it doesn't matter what it is. It could be your finances. It could be loved ones. It could be a job. It could be anything. The minute you start fearing, that's when it seems like it begins to magnify itself. Oh, this ain't even a mess. I'm supposed to be preaching. But I'm going to preach it anyway. When it seems like when fear begins to magnify itself, that's when it seems like things begin to get the best of you. But the minute you say, I ain't worrying about that. I'm not going to fear that. God is with me. And when you have that attitude, you can walk around here and say, you know what? I'm going to walk through. I can walk through hell with black, with gasoline draws on, and I still won't catch a fire. I can attack hell with an empty water pistol, and the fire will be out before I get there. Come on, come on. You can walk in the den of lions with, with pork chops tied around your waist, and the, the, the lions won't even touch you. Don't try that at home. <laughs> However, my point is, if you know that God is with you, the minute you don't fear and you got faith, thou do not set in, but faith and belief begin to magnify itself. And that fear dissipates. God is right there. Because you know what? See, God can work in the midst of faith, but he can't work in the midst of doubt and fear. That's right. Come on. Come on. When the boys was on that boat, he took them through. He said, let us pass over to the other side. Meaning that I'm going to be there with you. Let us pass over to the other side. And so when they got in the boat, they start off with smooth sailing. And I can only imagine they might have got in the middle of the sea and a storm of wind came up. And I can see them boys just continuing to roar. Through all that wind, the rain, and even the billows filling up the boat, the boat with water. I can see the waves just coming over. It seemed like they about to drown and about to go over. And then one, all of a sudden, one goes to wake Jesus up. He was in the bottom of the ship, sleeping on the pillar. And he wakes him up. Lord, carries not thou that we perish. They were in fear of their lives. Come on, come on. They thought they were going to die. See, Jesus had to get up, not because of the wind and the, and, the, and the storm, not because of the waves, but because of the fearless and the doubt, doubt, doubtless of the, uh, of the disciple in their dubious mind. They could not handle it after he told them, let us pass over to the other side. So he had to get up. He had to rebuke the very thing that was causing the problem, and that was the wind. See, this is what we do. We do the opposite. We always try to speak to the to the other situation instead of dealing with the underlying problem. 
The underlying problem was the wind. So he had to speak to the wind. He rebuked the wind. He actually had to denounce it, sharply denounce the wind. He rebuked the wind. And then even after he rebuked the wind, the wind stopped. But because of the effect of the wind and what the wind did to the sea, and the sea was still raging, and he had to turn around and speak to the sea and say, Peace be still. So when he spoke that, the Bible says, the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And see, when fear begins to grip your heart, it seems like it gets the best of you. Whether you've been hit with an infirmity, whether it's your finances, whether it's family members, whether this job or people on the job, the minute you allow that fear to grip your heart, it's hard for you to see God. It's hard for you to see the, the, the goal that, that is set before you, and that is to go through the other side or go to the other side. It's hard to see anything else. It's hard sometimes to even get a prayer through. Come on. But nevertheless, if you know that thou art with me, and when you don't fear, you say, I ain't worried about that. I already prayed about it. I'm not worried about that. God got my back. I'm not worried about that. He's my rear guard. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. And the Lord even told us, fear not him who is able to destroy the body but cannot destroy the soul, but rather fear him who can destroy both soul and body into hell. He's the only one that has a, a heaven and hell to put us in. He's the only one that can uh, uh, destroy the body and soul in hell. He can do that. But see, when we love him, when we have faith in him, when we trust him, you know what, people? We win. Amen. We don't lose. We win because why? We don't fear. We don't fear the things that he has control of. Amen. He had control of the atmosphere condition. He rebuked the wind. That's right. He spoke to the sea. He had power over the elements. The wind, the fire. The, the water, he had power over that. He had power over all his creation. So he caused the lions to shut their mouths when Daniel was thrown in the den of lions. Amen. He had fire over the elements of the fire. When the when the Shad, when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, those Hebrew boys, were thrown in the midst of fire, he had control over it. He said, I'm not going to let this fire touch you. Mm. The Bible said they went in bound with their clothes on. And that not one hair was seen was singed on their body. That's right. That's right. That's right. He has he has power. He knows how to deal with the elements. He knows how to deal with the atmosphere. He knows how to deal with the animals. And watch this. He has power over men because in Proverbs twenty one and one he said the king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. As the river of the water, he turns it wherever it wants to go. That's right. I don't know which one of y'all changed my message this morning, but it then got changed. I have to talk about don't fear now. Don't fear. I fear not, for I am with you. That way, we won't title it. We're going to title this message. We're going to title it that. Fear not, for I am with you. When you know God is with you, you don't have to fear. And we know the parent of all fears is death, but we ain't got to fear it. We don't have to fear it. And I believe, I really, really, really believe, honey, for Dr. Lola Lewis, I really believe, baby, you was with, when you were with me, you took me to the mercy room. My, uh, Minister Lewis, you were there with me. Y'all saw what I was going through. But I do believe because I did not fear. That's right. I didn't feel death. Yes, sir. That's right. And people, I'm not trying to preach my funeral or anybody's funeral. What I'm trying to tell you is that when you don't fear, mm -hmm. and God said, look here, he ain't even scared to come home with me. That's right. right. He ain't scared. Hey, he ready to come home and be with me. But you know what? I'm not ready for him to come. But I'm going to allow him to stay yes, because there's some things I still want to fulfill in his life. Yes, sir. Do you hear me? 
That's why some people beat cancer. That's why a women who have metastatic breast cancer, they beat it. Amen. Even though they have to go through chemo and, and radiation and all of that. Come on. Because God said, I st I'm going to keep you here for another 10, 15, 20 more years because I still got something for you. But I want you to understand, even though that you're going through this, this infirmity has struck you, I'm still with you. I can deliver you out of trouble. I can deliver you while you're in trouble. But you got to know, I'm with you, don't just don't be I'm reminded of the ten lepers. They said, Son of David, have mercy upon us. And so they, Jesus told them, go show yourself to the priest. So as they went, they realized they were healed. And one who, being a Samaritan, turned around and kneeled down and worshipped the Lord. And he said, thank you, Lord, giving God a, a glory, honor, and praise. And then Jesus turned around and looked. And looked, he said, wait a minute. I know my word is more powerful than the heal one because I sent my word out to heal ten. Ten asked for a uh, mercy. Ten asked for healing. And one came back to give me glory. But he, then Jesus said, wait a minute. Didn't I not heal ten of you? Where are the other nine? Come on. Come on. Where are the other nine? When it's all said and done, what you got to understand and you got to know, you got to give God his praise. Come on, you got to say thank you, Jesus. And you know what? If you start saying thank you, Jesus, even before the, before you throw them into the fire, you start praying and trusting God before you throw them into the den of lies. When you start saying thank you, Jesus, thank you, Lord, before you get on the boat and go through the storm, God has already done this. He dealt with, he shut the mouths of the line. He done quenched the fire. And guess what? You don't have to worry about the wind, nor the wave, nor the storm, because he got control over it all. You don't even have to worry. You don't even have to fear. You know why? Because he's with you. Amen. You know, some spouse fear husbands. Yes, sir. And some husbands fear, fear their wives. Amen. It go both ways these days. <laughs> Hello, somebody. Man has to sleep with one eye open, open closed, and he has to keep both his ears open at the same time. He's scared he might get that homemade napalm. Y'all know what homemade napalm is? High grits. Oh, somebody knows. Some of, some of y'all must already know experience that. But my point is, is that God knows how to deal with them too. Pray for them. If you will save your husband, not say, pray for him. Pray for him that God will change his heart, deal with his heart, and you just have to go in your closet. You don't even have to have, have to tell people. You ain't got to tell him, I'm praying for you, you old dirty rascal. No, 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 no. You keep living the chase, disciplined life that you are living. You continue to trust God. When the Lord sees you in secret, he will reward you openly. Amen. I didn't come here with my agenda today. I had one. Amen. But now I feel that the Holy Spirit is telling all of us, don't fear. That's Amen. right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. Come on. Don't fear. Mm. Some of you young people are here fearing that will you make it to the next grade? Mm -hmm. Some of you fear because you of, of the peer pressure that goes on in school. You worried about should you be caught up with with the uh, the elite crowd, the, what what they call that that group, uh, you know, I, I don't know what they call it now, but you don't have to worry about trying to be uh, uh, with those who, uh, you know, what we call those special groups, what they call them in school? The in crowd. The in crowd. Don't let that peer pressure get on you. Be you. That's right. If it's just you and God, you are still the majority. That's right. Amen. Amen. Because what they fail to realize is that God made them just like he made you. Amen. And you don't have to worry about that. You don't have to fear that. You don't have to be among the popular group. That's what I'm trying to think of. That's the, that, that's the, that's the term I was trying to think of. The popular group. You don't have to be with them. That's right. You know, you could be popular in Jesus Christ. Because when it's all said and done by you continue to pray for them and hope for the best for them, God is dealing with their heart. And you know what? They're going to need you before you need them. That's right. Amen. 
And sometimes we don't see it that way. Why? Because of we looking at the here and now. We only see what's natural to the eye. We only, we're only uh, 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 ex uh, looking at what we are experiencing right now. But people, you don't have to be afraid. But let me tell you what you have to be. You have to be you. Amen. Be good at being you. Yes, sir. That's right. There's no carbon, a, a carbon copy of you. You are the original. Amen. Be you. And even if somebody try to imitate you, they can't. Even actors mess up trying to imitate uh, uh, other uh, people in, in this world. But what we do, only thing we do, we get a laugh out of it. But we know that's not going to last because you know why? They got to revert back to their to their own self. Come on, come on. Hello, somebody. But people, God, listen, you ain't got to fear nothing. You just got to know if God be for you, who can be against you? We win either way. We win in life. For me to live is Christ. We win in this life. We win in death. That's the game. We have eternal life. We win either way. O oh, death, where is thy sting? O oh, grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But then Paul said in 1 Corinthians 15, 57, But thanks be to God, which given us the victory through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Our Lord Jesus Christ. We got victory over sin. We got victory over death. We got victory over everything. You know why? Because, see, the Bible says in, in John's Gospel, chapter, uh, chapter 15, Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. He said, every branch that's in me that beareth not fruit, he takes it away or cuts it off. And every branch that's in me that beareth fruit, he prunes it or purges it so it can do what? Bring forth more fruit. So now watch this. If I am the branch connected to the true vine, God is the husbandman or the gardener or the keeper of the vineyard or the vine. So whatever the vine go through, I go through, and whatever the branch go through, the vine go through. If I remain attached to him, guess what? We got the father watching over the whole garden, so everything got to go well. So Romans 8, 28 comes in play again. And we know that all things work together for good. To them that love God, to them who are the call according to his purpose, all he wants us to do is to remain attached to him. Amen. To stay in him. St. Right. John 15 and 7, if ye abide in me, my words abide in you, you can ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Amen. Herein is my Father glorified that you will do what? Bear much fruit. And you cannot bear fruit if you are not attached to the vine. Amen. If you are a branch that's cut off, all you good is nothing but for the fire. That's it. That's all you good for. Mm -hmm. You know, when you get to that point, when you just trust God and don't fear anything, God is, or he's just right there with you. Amen. He's with you. Never to leave you. But he had to wake up. He had to get up. There was too much fear on the boat. There was not enough faith on the boat. And he said, why is it that you're so fearful? Why is it that you have no faith? Those disciples looked at Jesus and said, what manner of man is this? Even the wind and the wave, the sea, obey him. Everything got to obey him. If the Bible says... Every knee shall bow to God and things on the earth, things on the earth, and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. That goes to show you he is God all by himself. Amen. Amen. You can search all over. You won't find any grave. That's right. You just got to know that God is with you. Don't you worry about anything, but you are to do what? Pray about everything. Philippians 4, 6, and 7 tells us what? Be careful for nothing, but in everything, 
by prayer, supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God, and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. In other words, I done prayed about that, so what I need to worry about it for? I done prayed about my finances, what I'm worried about it for. And when God starts blessing me, do I have to apologize for being blessed? No, sir. People want you to. Where you get that from? Mm -hmm. Where you get yours from? Mm -hmm. Hello, somebody. Mm -hmm. How you get yours? How you got yours? All right, sir. Why do I need to divulge my finances when you're not divulging yours to me? Come on, say that. You curious about the preaching now? Come on. Hello, somebody. You ain't got to be curious about me. I'm not a crook. That's right. I know I'm not. That's right. Amen. My wife knows I'm not. I don't have no Ananias and Sapphire spirit. Not in this house, but as far as me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Amen. There's one person I got to sleep with every night. And that ain't First Lady. Come on, sir. It ain't my wife. Come on, sir. It's not her that I got to sleep with. That's right. Because we were separated in the house for, uh, 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 for about, wow, almost a month. Mm -hmm. But that one person I got to sleep with every night is me, myself, and I, the three greatest people in my life mm -hmm. that we say that, 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 that are the three greatest people. But I got to sleep with myself. I got a conscience. Yes, sir. Yeah. Oh, sir, sir. And you got to sleep with that person, too, yeah. yourself, every night. You got to sleep with that person. So here's the thing. You do what's right, and you do what's uh, right before man and God. You don't have to fear anything. And when you get to the point where you're praying about everything and not worrying about anything, you don't even worry about what people say about you. You're like, okay. Because I look at it like this. You're the one with the problem, not me. You, you talking about me? You got the problem. I don't have the problem. You got the problem. You're talking about me. And you know what? I must be doing something right. Because, see, why is it that I'm coming up in your mind? Yeah. Why is it that now you have to say something about me? I must be doing something that you don't, that you're not doing. So people don't fear man. Let me tell you why I said that. Because when you go back to Hebrews chapter 13, look at verse 5 and 6. It says, let your conversation be without covetousness, mm -hmm. and be content with what you have. For he has said, no, let me back up. Y'all turn there. I think y'all y'all better turn there. I can quote this whole thing. That's not a problem me quoting it. But I want y'all to go there just for a minute. Hebrews chapter 13, because I want you to read, uh, uh, read this along with me. I want you to get this. I really want you to get this, because this is so important. When I say you don't have to worry about man or fear man, look at this right here. Are you there? Yeah. Let your conversation be without covetousness. And watch this. Your conversation should not be about always wanting and always desired. And the Bible says you should not even covet the things that your neighbor has. Mm -hmm. You got to keep your life free from, from the love of money. That's what he said. Let, he said here, let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as you have. So why are you worried about what I got? Come on, sir. Don't fear man. Come on. Don't worry about people talking about what you got and all this. You stay, look, stay in your lane. Come on. And listen, say to God, if you are talking about other folks, you got a problem. That's right. If you always got to say something about what somebody else got, you got a problem. You're not content. No, 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 no. And you know some people got to listen to me. See, the reason why some folks are not satisfied with the things they have because they always looking at what they don't have. Yes, sir. But if you start looking at what you got, yeah. you'll be content and satisfied and not worrying about the things that you don't have. Yes, My wife would tell you this. We, we, I, I, she was coming out the room. I was going into the room. And then all of a sudden, we ended up sitting, out, sitting outside on the porch. And I said, honey, you know what I thought about? I said, we got a house. We got cars. Mm -hmm. Our kids.
kids today doing well. They all got jobs. Mm -hmm. I said, you know, God blesses it to, to send them through college. Mm -hmm. I said, look at them. All of them got cell phones that I was paying for at one time. <laughs> no, that was past tense. Amen. Or I were paying for them at one time. Hallelujah. They, they take care of that now. But I, you know, I was just looking at all of this. I said, honey, we got this land. Mm -hmm. I said, we got clothes, we got food. Mm -hmm. I said, God done blessed us. Yes, sir. I said, we, when I start thinking about what God has blessed us with and the things we have, it made me not worry about what I don't have. Yes, sir. Amen. Mm -hmm. yes, sir. Amen. But when you start looking at what you don't have, what you don't have begin to magnify itself in your mind and you focus more on what you don't have than what you have. You always gonna have the haves and the have nots. But focus on what you have, then you don't worry about what you don't have. You focus on the haves, you don't have to worry about the have nots. Why? Because you don't listen. Let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as ye have. For he has said, the Lord has said, it is written, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Listen, God is with me. He'll be with you in trouble. He'll deliver you out of trouble. We pray the canopy of our protection all the time. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God. God in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler. Watch this. He shall deliver you from the trap of the enemy, from the snare of the fowler, from the noise and pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers. Under his wings shall thy trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrows that fly by day, nor for the pestilence that walk in the darkness, nor for the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling, for he shall give his angel charge over thee, to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hand, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder, the young lion and the dragon, shall thou trample on the feet, because he has set his love upon me. Oh, I love this. He has set his love upon me. Amen. If you set your love upon God, trust him, and watch this. He has set his love upon me, therefore Come on. I'll deliver him. Come on. I will set him on high. He don't have to worry about the wind, rain, and flood coming to take him out. I will set him on high. You know why? Because he has known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him, and with long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. You give God some praise and glory. That's our canopy of a public We got the canopy of our protection. Hello, somebody. We don't have to fear people. You know what? For he has said, you know, Elder Jackson, he has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. So that we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. What you say? What you, oh, you talking about me again? <laughs> I ain't worried about you. Yes, King's heart is in the hand of the Lord. Come on, sir. Yes, Only thing I'm going to do, I'm going to pray about you. I'm going to pray for you. Yes, the Bible told me not to curse you, but to bless you. So I bless you in the name of Jesus. I let God do the cursing. Yes, because he had not forsaken me, nor have left me. And I'm not afraid of you. You know why? Because giants, they do fall. Yes. Yes. 
storms don't last always. And if I trust what God said, he always have commanded somebody to feed me somewhere. Come on, come on. So we can boldly say, the Lord is my helper. Who's your helper? The Lord. the Lord is my helper. Who is your helper? The Lord. the Lord is my helper, and I will do what? I will not what? Fear. Fear what man shall do unto me. You don't have to fear. You know why? Because the Lord is with you. I do believe it's Psalms, and I, I'm just going to qualify this. I think it's Psalm 46. Look at Psalms 46. Turn that in your Bibles. Now, y'all got your iPads or whatever you use, uh, but I, I hope and trust you still got your Bible too. Look at Psalms 46 because you need to underscore this. Go Psalms 46 and 1. Notice this. It says, God. <laughs> I like how you start this off. God is our refuge and strength. And what we said in Psalms, not Psalm 91, not Psalm 91 and 1. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. God is my refuge and my strength. A very present help in trouble. He is right there. He's right here. And the way they said in Alabama, he rat here, R-E-T, he is rat here. They said like that in North Carolina, he rat here. Mississippi, he rat here. New York, he rat here. And, he's, and, and, and Georgia, we say, he is a very present help in trouble, and he is right, R-I-G-H-T, here. That's the way we say it in Georgia. Hello, sir. I mean, that's the way the Georgia people say it. He's a very present. In other words, he's right there. When Peter began to walk on the water to go to Jesus, he began to sing. Y'all know the whole story. I don't have time to read the, read the, the whole story all over. But then when he saw the boss, boss was when the Bible said, Peter, he feared, and he said, Lord, save me. Peter began to turn around and go back to the boat. He thought the boat was closer to him than Jesus. But he said, Lord, save me. The Bible said immediately. Immediately. The Bible didn't say Jesus had to run on the water to get to Jesus, I mean, to get to Peter to save him. The Bible said immediately Jesus reached forth his hand and saved him, and they both walked on the water to get back to the boat. Mm -hmm. He's a very present help when? When you're in trouble. So we can get in trouble, people, but you got to know who's with you. And if God be for you, who can be against you? I don't know. I think the bishops changed this message today. Because both of them in here. <laughs> Sister Bishop and Brother Bishop. I think they've changed this message, y'all. Amen. I came in here to try to talk about the spiritual warfare, but God said this is spiritual warfare. Because when you know, when you know, you hear that, when you know that I'm with you, you don't have to fear anything. You ain't got to fear no pandemic. You ain't got to fear death. You ain't got to fear sin. You ain't got to fear man. Fear not him who's able to destroy the body. Oh, can they kill you? Yes, they can. But they are not the one for whom you to fear, but rather fear him who can destroy both body and soul in hell. People, y'all don't have to worry. Young people, you ain't got to worry about those popular groups. You ain't got to worry about fearing them. Fear the Lord. Trust in him. Let him be your rear guard. Because he's a very present help in trouble. He's our shelter and our strength, always ready to help us in time of trouble. And saints, we give him trouble. And this is one thing that gets me about some Christian people. The minute a little adversity hit them, oh, this ain't God. Mm. How in the world do you know if God can bring you through it if you don't go through it? See, when you start going through something, don't, don't say God didn't make meant for me to go through this. 
When he took those 12 disciples, well, I can't even exactly say it was 12, but the ones that he actually had on the boat at the time, he said, let us pass over to the other side. But he was right there with them. But see, he took them through a time where it seemed like adversity hit them. They feared for their lives right there on the boat while they tried to row through that storm. Notice what they said, Master, don't you care? Carest thou not that we perish? All right. Well, let me ask you this. Watch this. They call him Master, Teacher, meaning that you have the ability to do something. But when that was all said and done, they had to refer to him as Lord because he had all sovereign power over everything. They had to change what they call him, master, master teacher. You have the ability, but when they say, Lord, not only you have the ability, you also have the authority. My wife woke up one morning. She said, thank you, Lord. I said, it's about time you start acknowledging me. I heard some thunder and lightning. Boom, boom, boom. I said, oh, I'm sorry, Lord. <laughs> she, yeah, I, said, uh, I stick with the sweetie thing. <laughs> you see, because he's Lord. Right. He is Lord. Now, the Bible does say, well, why do you call your husband Lord like Sarah called Abraham Lord? Little Amen. L-O-R-D. Amen. Not capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. Amen. You do well. I'll leave that alone. That's a total different subject. That's for marriage, enrichment, uh, retreats, and stuff like that. So we'll leave that one alone. But anyway, God is right there. He's right there, a very present help. So they had to go from calling him master, rabbi, teacher, to Lord. Nicodemus, John chapter 3, came to Jesus by night. And said to Jesus, he said, he said, no man can do these miracles that thou does, except God be with him. How you get, how you were you delivered out of COVID, Pastor Lewis? God was with me. He's a very present help. Right. In trouble. Yes. No man can escape from the den of lies except God be with him. Mm -hmm. No man can escape the fire or the wind or the storm except God be with him. No man who doesn't have anything can end up with everything except God be with him. If you don't fear, know that God is with you. God already took care of the problem before it even manifests itself to you. Amen. You got to trust God. Amen. You got to know that God is God. He's a very present help in trouble. That's the God we serve. Well, Pastor Lewis, how do you know there is a God? Well, how do you know you got a brain? Mm -hmm. And you know what? When people ask me, how do I know God exists? I ask them this question. I say, who's the first president of the United States? They said, George Washington. I say, I say how do you know? Call the history book. I say, well, call the his, his, history book. His story. This is his story. If you can believe what the history book says about George Washington, the first president of the United States, that you never saw. Mm -hmm. But you heard about him through history. Yes, and it was written about him through history. Mm -hmm. Why can't you accept his story? Yes. Yes, Why can't you accept yes. his story? Yes. See, this is the hymn book. Not the H-Y-M-N, but the H-I-M book. This is the him book. Amen. This book is all about him. From Genesis. Make sure it's not upside down. Okay. This is it's about, it's, it's about him. Yeah. From Genesis to Revelation. 
It's all about him. I'll turn my iPad upside down and look at my But this book here got to be right side up because this is the other book can keep you right side up. Come on, So if you can believe that George Washington is the first president of the United States and you never saw him, I can believe that Jesus is Christ. He is Lord. And in the beginning, Genesis 1 and 1, in the beginning, God. Not towards God. Not a God. I'm going to leave that alone. I'm going to leave that alone. In the beginning, God. God. Those first three words. That, 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 there are, there's ten, ten words in that first verse. In the beginning, the first three. Ten is the number of completion. But when you say God created the heaven and earth, those are the next seven words that was in that scripture made it all purpose. All, right. all, all perfect. And watch this. And when you go to the book of Revelation, the last chapter, and look at the last two verses. Even so now come Lord Jesus, and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. It starts when God is with Jesus coming. Jesus Christ is saying yesterday and today forevermore. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. Jesus thought not rather be equal with God. Then he said to St. John 14 and 1, let not your heart be troubled. If you believe in God, believe also in me. Amen. This book is all about him. Mm -hmm. And if you trust him, see, watch this. I'm going to give you something, Mr. Jackson. See, something you didn't know. See, you be teaching us a whole lot of things, but I'm going to teach you something right quick. When we first come to God, we don't come to him loving him. No, you don't. You don't. You come to him trusting him. You come to him having faith in him. And as you get to know him, then you begin to love him. Just like a relationship. You don't come in and say, oh, that's the love of my life. No, you have to have some trust first. Or some faith first, and as you get to know that person, then that relationship begins to get stronger and stronger, and then you begin to get engaged. Because we all go through engagement period. And then after that, you say, I think I'm in love with you. Let's get married. I don't think y'all had it like that, but my point is, when we come to God, we come to him trusting him first. Hebrews 11 and 6. He that comes to God must believe that he is, that he exists. Amen. And he is a reward of them that diligently, diligently seek him. And the Bible said, we love God because he first loved us. Right. We didn't love him first. He loved us. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. And because he loved us, then we start loving him. Yeah. And when we start loving him, all our fears from earth to glory, whether this the ionosphere, the stratosphere, the toposphere, or you say toposphere. But when it's all said and done, all your fears are gone. You know why? Because now you learn to trust him and now you begin to love him. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Amen. 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 Won't you give him some praise? Amen. You give him some glory in the house of God. This word came straight from you. I'm Dr. Willis O'Neill Lewis, and I approve this message. Amen. 
You certified and anointed. And I believe and I trust that everyone has received it. You are to be glorified and magnified. Because it's all about you. I dare to take your glory in any kind of way. Yes, I had an agenda. I had a message to bring forth. But God, as soon as I stepped up here on this poor pit, you allowed me to pull some of the people out of the pit, the pit of fear, the pit of doubt. And Father, I just want to say thank you for strengthening their faith and let them know that they do not have to fear. But all, the only thing you want us to do is to remain in faith. Now, Father, keep your people. Be with them and bless them. Guide them throughout each and every day of their lives. And we be careful to give your name the glory, honor, and praise. For it's in Jesus' name. You all take your seats. And I want every head to remain bowed, every eye closed. Because there's someone who is viewing in and is live streaming with us on today. And I do want to say thank you for live streaming with us today. And I, praise God, I pray that God has blessed your heart and has touched your heart and you receive from something from this word on this morning. But maybe there's someone out there who's listening who don't know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. And you want to be saved. Maybe there's someone that's sitting out here in this congregation today who is not saved and you want to be saved. I'm not going to ask you to come to the altar because we are maintaining our social distance in the house. But what I am going to ask you to do, if you want to be heaven saved and know that you're saved and have true salvation, according to Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10, and knowing that God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, knowing that for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, knowing that, you know, that that's the scripture tells us for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And if you shall confess with your mouth, the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. You shall be saved, for with the heart man believes unto righteousness, with the mouth confessions made to salvation. What the scripture says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall not be ashamed. But there is no difference between the Jew nor the Greek. He's the same Lord over all the rich unto all that calls upon him. Now, I want you to repeat this short prayer. This is what we call the sinner's prayer. This is the prayer you must, be, must pray in order for you to be born again and to be saved and to have your name to remain in the book of life. Pray this with me and repeat this after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you now confessing that I am a sinner. I ask you to forgive me of all my sins and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and he is the Son of God who came, he died on the cross, he was buried in a tomb and on the third day God, you raised Jesus from the dead for my righteousness. Jesus, I do now. I confess you. I accept you. And I receive you as my Lord, my Master, and my Savior. Thank you for saving me and keeping my name in the book of life. Now, if you believe that, give God some praise. Give him some glory. Hallelujah. Stay in the book. Grow in grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And know what the scripture says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Now you are a new creation. You are a new person in Christ. Your former life is now behind you. Your new life is before you. So you just need to stay in God and stay in the word. And if you are in another state or if you're in another town, 
is buy you a good church where they're teaching and preaching the word of God. And you get you find you a good pastor. I'm not talking about somebody who's just going to beat you out your money and stuff like that. And because as they teach you what the word says about giving, you will give because you love God now. And you understand what the Bible says. But nevertheless, stay in him. Amen. Praise the Lord. And for those who are live streaming, right now we're getting ready to um, disconnect uh, from this broadcast. But I do want you to understand and do want you to know that we will continue to live stream this Wednesday. I'll be back at my home live streaming, and we will come to you at 7 o'clock for Bible study. But we need you to start coming in at 650 so that way you'll be ready to receive us as we begin to live stream. And then um, also I will put the word out, let you know uh, when we'll have service uh, next month. Uh, I, ha I haven't give, given anybody the word yet, but we will put the word out. Uh, but lo locally here, I'm going to make sure our, all our leaders know they'll get the word out to the body of Christ. And for those of you who are live streaming, uh, if you li listen in on Wednesday, and also I try to repeat it uh, again on Sunday, and we'll try to make sure that you uh, get the word as well. Amen. And so we love you and appreciate you. And remember, and let me give you this benediction. I give the benediction to all. I know some of y'all want to stay around, hang around, and fellowship and all of that. That's fine, well and deadly. But as I give this benediction, let us all stand to our feet. To our feet. We thank God for you. And remember, our benediction coming from Jude, chapter uh, 1, verse 24, 25. And it says, now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, to be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. And let the church say amen. amen. Want to love yourself, give yourself a big hug. And remember, it's all about Jesus and it's all about him. Amen. God bless and God keep you. We love you. And we'll see you Wednesday. Start screaming in at 6.50. God bless you. Give him some praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.